Hello everyone. In a previous video I asked the question, is snow a rock? This quick presentation was a chance for me to explain what is a rock and what isn't from a scientific point of view. I said that rocks are made up of minerals and minerals are solid, natural, inorganic materials that have a crystalline structure. Now I may have left some of you wondering what on earth is a crystalline structure? That's what I'm going to explain in this follow-up video. What does crystalline mean, and what are crystals? A quick side note, if you're looking for videos on healing crystals, keep on looking. I have a very clear opinion on the possibility of using crystals for healing purposes, but now is not the time to talk about it. This is simply an introductory geology presentation. When you think about crystals, you probably imagine something like this. The crystals in this image are very distinctive. They have a number of flat faces, some of which taper to a point. They have polygonal cross sections, which means if you were to cut through them, you would get a shape like a square or a hexagon. And of course, they have this lovely purple color. These crystals are examples of a mineral called amethyst one of the nearly 5,000 minerals known to science. Every mineral, by definition, has a crystalline structure, so there is a lot of variation in the shapes, sizes, and colors you can find in crystals. To understand what a crystal actually is, you have to look really deep. It's at the atomic level that geologists define these marvels of nature. Minerals are made up of atoms, just like all the substances you are familiar with. Now those atoms are bonded together in very specific ways to create a structure that is the same everywhere inside the mineral. That's a crystalline structure. The simplest one is a cubic structure which literally forms cube-shaped crystals. Every atom is bonded to six other atoms and all the bonds are at right angles to each other. These atoms form the corners of a regular cube. So do these atoms. The cubic structure repeats itself indefinitely. That's what a crystalline structure is. It is highly ordered and it repeats itself in all directions. There are seven main structures found in minerals which are distinguished by their symmetry. Every mineral on earth has its atoms arranged in one of these seven categories. For example, pyrite crystals are cubic. That's the mineral often referred to as fool's gold. Rubies and sapphires, which are both made of the mineral corundum, naturally have a hexagonal structure. The gemstones you see in jewellery shops were cut to look a certain way. They originally came from minerals with specific crystalline structures. That's really all you need to know about crystalline structures, but there's more to say about what crystals themselves are. After all, there's a big difference between a few atoms joined together and a piece of amethyst the size of your hand. How do we get from this to this? What I'm really asking is, how do crystals form? The answer is, they grow. Many crystals are found in igneous rocks, those that form from solidified magma, molten rock. Minerals are found inside the magma, but they start off in a molten state as atoms or molecules just floating about in liquid. To become solid minerals, they need to cool down. There are a few ways in which magma can cool down. The most spectacular is when it erupts onto the Earth's surface as lava. As magma cools, the atoms and molecules inside it begin to join together. They bond in specific ways to create the core of a crystalline structure. Then more atoms bond to that core and the structure expands. As more and more and more atoms are added on, a crystal is built up. If the magma completely solidifies, that crystal will become part of the rock it leaves behind. Crystals can also be formed when a pre-existing rock is baked and pressurized deep underground. That process is called metamorphism. It's also possible for crystals to be formed biologically. Many invertebrates build their shells out of tiny crystals of calcite or aragonite. Even your body does this. Your bones contain a mineral called hydroxyapatite, which gives them their strength. 
I know I'm going a bit fast with this video, but there is definitely room to expand on some of these concepts in future. I'd just like to go over one more thing before we finish up. For geologists, the distinction between crystalline and not crystalline is a very important one. There are a few substances that are often mistaken for minerals, but they're not because they don't form crystals. A substance like this is called a natural glass. You've probably heard of one natural glass before. It's the stuff you use to make nether portals in Minecraft. Obsidian is a type of glass that forms when basaltic lava, the most common type of lava on earth, cools really, really quickly. When magma or lava cools and solidifies extremely quickly, the atoms and molecules inside it don't have time to bond together in a neat crystalline structure. One way to cool lava quickly enough to make obsidian is to expose it to seawater. The open ocean is incredibly cold, and it's also where most of the world's basaltic lava is generated. When it erupts under the sea, it is quenched almost instantly. The outside forms a dome-shaped layer of obsidian that insulates the inside of the dome so it has a little more time to cool and form a rock with crystals inside. One feature that differs between crystals and glasses is how they break. Because crystals are structured in a very specific way, they only break along specific planes of weakness. Natural glass doesn't contain planes of weakness, it's equally strong in all directions. That means you can break it into any shape you want and make some absurdly sharp edges. People have actually been doing this for thousands of years, including the Aztecs of Central America. In some parts of the world today, surgeons use obsidian-tipped scalpels that are ten times sharper than their steel equivalents. Well, that's all I wanted to talk about this time around. Be sure to leave a comment below if there's something sciencey you want to know, and subscribe for more of my content. Until next time, good luck with your studies.